Hello, this is John Miller, the creator of The Rest of Everest. I think I can safely say that this show is, without a doubt, the most in-depth look into the entire experience of what it takes to climb Everest, as well as some other peaks throughout the Himalayas. But all of the events in the series are shown in chronological order. So if you're new to the show, please go all the way back to episode 000 and watch everything in order. That's truly the best way to enjoy it. Thanks. Hi everyone, before we start this week's episode, I wanted to announce that the official DVD for our film, Ever's The Other Side, is now available for sale. Amazing, right? I'm very proud of the DVD and it's beautiful. It has a lot of bonus content. We're publishing the DVD ourselves, so we're opening the film up for pre-order so we can get an idea of just what the demand is, and so we can have enough copies manufactured. Uh, interested? Just go to EverestTheOtherSide.com to reserve your copy today. Thanks. This is the Rest of Everest video podcast, an almost unabridged expedition experience. Episode 115, Kathmandu, exactly the same, but different. Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Rest of Everest. I'm John Miller. Very pleased to start the official first episode of the Everest Trek 2009 footage. And as you know, there was a much, much different undertaking this trip than uh, my previous ex expeditions to Everest, because this time I took a whole bunch of viewers with me and uh, along with Chris Marquardt uh, taught a photography workshop and so we're going to be going through all of this huge amount of just really incredible footage of what it was like to uh, walk to the south side of Mount Everest and I'm very happy to start bringing some of the participants into the show this week and uh, I want to introduce everyone to three of the guys who are with us and um, I think we'll start off with uh, Steve Beatty up in London, Ontario, Canada. How you doing, Steve? I'm great, John. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Glad to have you along. Uh, we'll go down a little bit south and uh, into the Cleveland, Ohio area and John Coleman's vis uh, visiting with us today. So how you doing, John? I'm doing great. And then we're going to head out west to the Bay, Bay Area in California and hey. Jeff Coe is with us as well. How you doing, Jeff? I'm doing great, John. How are you? Doing well. You know, we just uh, kind of talking amongst ourselves realized that uh, this is getting way in advance, but these are the three guys who uh, came to base camp with me. And uh, you'll see all of that episodes probably in several months, but it was just sort of interesting that the first episode of commentary is with uh, the team of us that actually made it to base camp. Um, kind of interesting there. So in any case, we have a lot of material to cover. This week's episode is going to be super long because I want to get through as much Kathmandu footage as possible. I know all of you have seen Kathmandu several times through the show. I really want to get into the new stuff, which is flying to Lukla. And so we should be able to get to that next week. But right now we did some incredible sightseeing. So I think let's start off this episode by starting in Germany. And I wish Chris Marquardt could be here this week, but he's not. So he will be with us on video. So here we go. Okay, I'll take a taxi to the train station in about two hours from now. I will then uh, take the train to Frankfurt where we'll meet Monica. And from there, after a night in a hotel at the airport, we'll take off uh, to Kathmandu using Qatar Airlines and um, we'll have a stopover in Doha and then we arrive um, in Kathmandu tomorrow uh, in two days on the 2nd of May. Um, this duffel is 140 liters, that's 37 gallons in size. It's waterproof, it's um, I think uh, works even in outer space, I have no idea. Um, this thing is heavy duty and all the heavy-duty stuff that we're taking up on the trip is actually turning out to be a bit of an issue because with Qatar Airlines we can only take 20 kilos of checked-in luggage with us. And this is not 20 kilos. There's no way there <laughs> this is 20 kilos. I've already taken out stuff and put it in the carry-on and I have already um, sacrificed the tripod. I'm not going to take a tripod with me. I've already sacrificed on some batteries, even though that really hurts, but this is all weight that we got to carry. Um, and well, we'll have to see if I get this stuff on board without any issues. 
I fly enough on United Airlines that uh, I actually could carry more stuff uh, than most of the truckers. Uh, unfortunately, I st that gave me the opportunity to overpack, and I took full advantage of that. It's very easy to overpack for these truckers. Tell me what just Absolutely. happened. So this well, is Monica here. we managed to uh, damage the zipper of my duffel bag. It just, um, just yeah. jumped out. It jumped out. And now there's the question how to fix that before we check in, or is there a way to, to secure the luggage that not everything comes out when it's in the plane. Do so we have a plan? <laughs> plan B. Um, <clears throat> yeah, what Chris just told me that there is certain service at the airport to um, seal the baggage. To shrink wrap to, to it. To shrink wrap it, yeah. And I hope there is something like that. And then we try to fix it in Kathmandu. And yeah, hopefully that will work. The zipper story. Ex Suspense. <laughs> but that is a big deal, though. Really well, sure as it is. turns out, you could buy all of those fake bags in Kathmandu. Uh, yeah, that will you can get ubiquitous. anything in Kathmandu. Highest mountains. Yeah, I think Megan had to do the same thing, did she not? Yeah, she did. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and her bag burst open in flight. Right. Thankfully, she didn't lose anything. Huh. Yeah, like a trekking pole or something. That would have been right. <laughs> oh, then you could just buy a knockoff, I guess. So this is them actually descending into the uh, Kathmandu airport. And uh, they they flew east and... Um, uh, I think Steve, you you flew east as well, but the, the rest did. of us all flew west uh, and actually met in Hong Kong. So this is at the Marshandi Hotel. Yep, there's me. Yep. Huh. And Monica. Hello. So Steve. How are you? How was your trip from Canada? Uh, it was good. It was long, tiring. It took me about uh, 29 hours to get yeah. here. Uh, but now I'm here. It's beautiful. 29 hours. 29 hours. Yeah. Okay. So I'm ready for a, a nap. <laughs> but tomorrow, How long have you been up? Uh, well, let's see. I left Saturday morning at 8 uh, Eastern time. Okay. And uh, the difference is about 10 hours. Okay. So what's, what is it, Sunday? Yeah. Yeah, what day is it? I have no idea. <laughs> 10 p.m. I don't sleep well on airplanes, so I've been up probably for... Uh, a good uh, two days. <laughs> good. Yeah. You, you need well, some Dana, sleep. Yeah. You do two need days. some sleep. Yeah, I do need some sleep. But I'm all, I'll be all set for tomorrow morning. I'll do some sightseeing, take some pictures. Yeah, it'll be great. Cool. <laughs> so, Jeff, how long have you been up now? Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know if you count that last five minutes as real sleep. So, why, why are you still up? Why are you not, why are you not upstairs in the room? Because uh, it takes energy to get off this couch and get upstairs. Ich hab VAAS eingebaut. There's Tilo. Um, well, we're actually expecting the rest of the Americans to show up, and it's um, quarter past 10 now, p.m., and they were supposed to be here 50 minutes ago, but then. The clocks in Nepal just tick at a different pace. It's just a fact. So yesterday uh, we actually waited for a whole day, almost for a whole day, for Jeff to arrive. So we'll have to see where this goes. You know what happened was is that my flight was supposed to uh, arrive or leave from Hong Kong at around 7 p.m. and get in nine on Saturday night, and then the flight leaves at three in the morning. But can't land in Kathmandu because of the weather, so we that's land right. in New Delhi. You flew to India, that's right. I flew to India, and then, um, so they waited for me twice at two different, the original time and then the delayed time, and then finally the, the delayed landing time, there was nobody there for me, and they, they gave up on me, it seemed, so I took a cab. I <laughs> uh, didn't have karma waiting for me. How tired are you? Pretty tired. <laughs> Did you get some sleep on the plane though? So did you get did you, any calculations as to how long you were up? Uh, the last full night's sleep I got was Thursday night. Which is because I had long to be ago? up. At, no, that was two days ago. Okay. Probably about fifty hours ago. 
<laughs> wow. It's been nothing but naps since then. Cause, and the night before we left, I didn't. I had to be up at 2.30 to get to my first flight, so I didn't Okay. I didn't sleep at all that night. Plus, I was too like hyper and hyped yeah. up about the trip. And, so. well, we're all still hyper here. Yeah. Yeah. John, I'd say that's a little bit of foreshadowing, huh? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yes. And it must be about... 6 a.m. local time. This is the next morning up on the roof, and this is being filmed by Steve Wolf, the, uh, who uh, our hotel, just arrived the night before with me. The name of. Yeah, that morning was so exciting to be up there and see the city. A bit hazy. I guess maybe not as bad as I thought it would be. Some mountains up there, or hills in the background. You'll notice that everyone on this trek seems to either be named John in, uh, or Steve. <laughs> so we're going to have to keep identifying who's who, but again, this was Steve Wolf. There's Andy. Yep, Andy Wolf, his wife. And, and Kyle. Kyle looks and like Steve Beattie. Steve. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you guys had seen so much of the podcast. Uh, did this these scenes in uh, Tamel here, did they really seem to be exactly what you were expecting, or was it still different? I'd say let's start with Steve. Um, it was about what I was expecting, but just multiplied like 10 times. You know, it was uh, crowded and very fast paced, lots of traffic, motorcycles. You know, I found it all a bit overwhelming, but it was really wonderful to be there and, and see that firsthand. What about you, John? Yeah, I mean, it, it seemed like pretty much what I was expecting, kind of like what Steve said, just just magnified. You know, you, you, kind of a recurring theme throughout this whole thing is seeing it in person is very different than seeing it in video. You know, you can't really understand the, the chaos until you're actually in the middle of it. Now, now Jeff, I remember that uh, you were not an original viewer of my show. I know that both John and Steve had emailed me and we had kind of contacted each other over email years almost seemed like years ago but uh, you you started watching the show and you became a part of the uh the trek here uh as you were getting getting prepared to to come out and um so what what was the whole experience like for you to be in Katmandu after it was sort of like almost you hadn't been planning on it for years well i it was well you know you sold me when you and chris did the uh uh, the little um, blurb, uh, and 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 I actually listened to it maybe a month after you originally broadcast it uh, or podcasted it, and I said, oh, I really want to do this because I was really into photography, and I had some friends um, that had uh, been to Everest, and uh, I watched a few episodes of your podcast, and I said, this is very very cool, and I want to do this. If there's any way possible I can do this, I wanted to do it, and uh, and it basically took this two dimensional footage and brought it to three dimensional reality for me it was unbelievable look where I concentrate on holding the camera still and waiting for someone to do something interesting in front of it we're actually at the uh, at Swan Budna otherwise known as the Monkey Temple here I am actually waiting for the perfect moment I think I already have one and that's when these guys come out of the water with their hands full of coins and, and drop them wash them in the water that's money laundering kind of <laughs> they wash them, they, they put them in the bucket, and it's just... I mean, yes, obviously, people throw money in, into, into these kind of things, but just seeing them actually working to get all that out and carrying out bucket loads full of money, it's cool. Now I understand why this place is so clean and well-maintained. It's all the buckets full of money. <laughs> Well funded. Well funded. Absolutely. Religion is. Absolutely well funded. That's what I what I noticed on the um, on the way here. We actually ended up seeing lots of desolate buildings and things. Plus, the monasteries all being in good shape, being clean, well maintained buildings, fresh painted, colorful. Whereas the rest somehow looks like it's slowly crumbling apart. Which is Unfortunate. It's true, though. Uh, Kathmandu does, in many places, looks like it's falling apart, and uh, I think that's. Uh, you, you come to these places, and they they really are in a little bit different shape because these are real pilgrimage areas. People come from all over to to visit these these stupas. 
And aside from the money that they're getting out of here, they are, they're also funded by uh, admission fees because you do have to pay uh, an admission to get in there. So now we'll start to head up towards the stupa. The first of many, many stairs. Yeah. <laughs> I remember uh, Chris put his hands on the rail there that had just been painted, but they didn't put a... Uh, <laughs> there it is. There it is. Oh, I had forgotten all about that. Until, I had forgotten all they about that. They don't have any signs anything. for like, oh, yeah. <laughs> fresh painted here. I just... I had no idea that, that happened. Somehow. <laughs> is, it, is it okay to... Yeah, we kind of broke up into some, several different groups, and um, we did have a tour guide. Um, I think his name was Krishna, but I can't remember exactly right now. But it was funny because he said, okay, we're going to go up now, we'll have 15 minutes up top here to look around, and then we're going to head back to the bus. And I was thinking to myself, 15 minutes? I don't think so. It's going to take a little bit more time than that. So we ended up splitting up into several different groups, and the group that was with me, I know we... We were up there, I think, much longer than the, the other groups, and uh, everyone had was actually waiting for us. <laughs> so I feel bad about that, but at the same time, I don't feel bad about it. Actually, I think we all ultimately ended up waiting for Kyle as he kind of disappeared for a while. <laughs> yeah, it right. turns out he was on the roof of some building somewhere, taking he like climbed up on top of one of these buildings <laughs> and was taking some really good photos. That photographer you just saw, that Sonam, he was uh, part of our staff, but. He's sometimes is great, and he was really interested in photography, so he w was able to also become a student. And so he was really the liaison between the Sherpa staff and, and all of uh, the, our group. And uh, he just did a really wonderful job bridging, bridging the gap there and really, really enjoyed being a student of photography as well. I was filming the stuff and I heard a familiar voice in the distance. And I think, yeah, I think, Jeff, I think you were talking with the guy and it ended up being uh, my old friend uh, Kumar, who we'll see shortly. He made a distinct impression on me from your original podcast. I knew we'd see him. I just didn't know exactly when. Does he um, hang out here all the time? That's where he has a shop, yeah. Okay. He doesn't live there, but he has a shop there. <laughs> uh, it's just so great to be there because everyone's so friendly. Just always enjoy going up there. There he is. I was so happy to see him. He'd lost almost all his front teeth since uh, two years ago, the last time I saw him. I was really sad to see that. When you came here this time, when did I Uh, um... Sunday. Oh yeah. In the evening. Oh, uh, this time, um, yeah. I'm going to the uh, south side of Everest, the base uh, camp, yeah, this time, okay. and I have this whole group oh, yeah, with oh, me okay, all right. and everything. Oh, yeah, well, and, you are welcome. And I think everyone knows who you are. Really? Yeah. My goodness, I met you. Thank you very Excellent speed. Excellent speed. As well as gracias, hospitality for you. But you know, that would be really, really great opportunity to know by each other. Okay? That you are really so kind of you. That is oh. very kind of you. Got my stuff out here. I was I trying to uh, uh, <laughs> show him footage of my family. So I had a son since the last time I saw him. <laughs> how was your how was your house? I know you were having house, yeah, I built a house. Yeah. And fortunately. And on the other part. And so that I will show you. Mm -hmm. When you will be back from the city. Yeah, I'm, I, I might be coming back every year. Yeah. I'll yeah, see. I'd yeah. love to, I'd love to buy you, buy you dinner sometime. My son, my son is okay. He's okay. He's okay. Because he was, he was, he was very naughty boy so before, but now frequently he changed his mind and grabbed him back. Okay, you know. good, good, so good. So he was getting better, little better since before two weeks. It's re yeah, really? Oh, yeah, great. really, yeah. He was such a naughty boy. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. He, uh, oh. He's oh. almost one and a half one years old. Year, yeah. Oh my goodness, oh you are so cute. And already, already, already playing, he doesn't yep, oh, yep. <laughs> already. So, yeah. so his name is Samuel. Samuel, oh may God bless him. Yep. I pray for her, for him. And, uh, yeah, he's, uh, I will give you my email address. Yeah, let me, um, yeah, I have a yeah. yeah, I've actually emailed back and forth with him several times um, over the past few months. 
I might, I might, I might come back. Yeah, because um, I want, I want him. He's never been here before. I want him. We haven't gotten to see the stupa. Um, but uh, this is one of the interesting things. This, this was you know my third visit here, and um, it was really interesting. Every every trip is different, but the the most kind of amazing thing this time is that I started. I realized I know people here in Kathmandu. I really have. I really have friends around the area, so it's it's not just going to be sightseeing for me anymore. It's going to check in on my friends, see how they're all doing. <laughs> you set this up, John, I remember. I said, here, walk around there really slowly. I'm going to get this on camera. Uh -huh. My first view of the stupa. Which you really can't see until you're right there. Exactly, until you turn the corner. Yeah, it's magnificent. Yeah. Then you can't miss it. <laughs> you know, erected, uh -huh. erected with a semi hemispheric doom by those oh. people who came from heaven. Uh -huh. That is Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, uh -huh. So the name of this place is called Swayambu. Swayambu means it's self Swayambu. coordinated heaven life, uh -huh. protecting by the five elements, so that they have water, life, on. So there is the pinnacle, which is the main protector for the whole creator. According to my matter of the Buddhism, physically, mentally, psychology, and these are the thirteen rings, degree of knowledge. You know, degree? Degree, right, degree, degree of, knowledge. of knowledge. Degree of knowledge. The Buddha is one of the superior human beings who has been enlightened. He's explaining all different aspects the of the, of the stupa and its construction, due to, due to volumes of stuff in about 30 seconds of time. So <laughs> Just very quickly. These are the right path, which go to the nirvana, which is the way to the heaven. Mm -hmm. According to my Can you tell me the name again, please? The name? Swayambu. Swayambu. Swayambu means itself ordinary the divine life. So there are the five different positions. The Buddha has five positions. Position. Because the Buddha advised the whole human being we have to produce there it is. new enlightenment by doing the meditation, by kicking out this, such as this, illusion, delusion, anger, violence, greedy. So this place is really, this place is really fantastic, fabulous, dynamite, incredible, magnificent, spectacular, tropical, unbelievable, unforgettable, unimmer, unimmer, unimmer. Is that it? Yeah, all this. That's all. That's all. That's all. Exclusive. Say that again. I didn't hear that. Say that again. Exclusive. Say that again. Exclusive. No, the whole thing. The whole thing. Incredible, dynamite. Incredible, dynamite, fantastic, fabulous, magnificent, spectacular, terrific, terrific, unbelievable, unforgettable, unimmer, undreamable. <laughs> I didn't catch that. <laughs> I know you are holding my leg. Yeah, I was so happy to see him. I am teasing you. Yeah, to tease. You're, You're a great guy to tease. Out. It's very nice to meet you. You might have seen me give him a hug a little bit earlier, and he had told me that uh, he owned the shop that we were in. Because the first time I saw him, he, he, he was a shop owner, and then uh, last, uh, last trip, he, he, he had to give up his shop, and he was an employee, and he was so sad he had to... He wasn't owning a shop anymore, and then this time he was owning, so I was so happy to hear that he had been doing well. So off off of the um, the stoop, you know, the main stupa, the the, the it's kind of like a square or the uh, the kora path where you walk around it. There's all these little temples and everything. So uh, people make offerings all over the place, and so. Uh, they got to keep cleaning off all the offerings, otherwise it just gets built up too much. Here's someone making an offering. Now, what do they do with all of these offerings when they're cleaning them up? I don't know. That's a good question. I should find out next time I'm there in a few months. But there was, there's also a monastery there, and so um, <clears throat> Kumar brought us in to, uh, to see the monks were all uh, praying there. And I'd never been been in here before. This was pretty cool. So uh, stayed on the outside, try not to get in their way. Yeah, it was very cool to be in there. I kind of, I kind of felt like I was imposing, but uh, they're very welcoming. There's Kumar. Yep, in the distance there. I stayed on the outside and just shot. Uh, from the outside. It was cool they'll be able to see the, the age range of the monks. You know, you have these little kids all the way up to these elders. And, you know, it's just really interesting to see the diversity and, and how old everyone is. And 
Actually, I recall on Facebook, Steve, you uh, you took a photograph of the little boy in front uh, in the distance there. Yeah, that's right. They had the one uh, in the background with his head down there. I, I got a great picture of him kind of looking out the window, so I thought, but I guess he was actually looking at you. <laughs> that's right, yeah. I have, I have some footage of him. I am right there up. in the background, yeah. Hear the scriptures. The um the photo that Steve took, um, it's cool because it, it does show that that little boy there on the on the left, kind of just looks like he's daydreaming at the time, and you can tell that you know he's he's not totally into what they're doing right now. <laughs> he's just a little a little kid, so it was just cool to see that you know they're still able to be little kids. This is really cool to see because I actually missed out on all this. I kind of wandered off on my own, had my little moment by myself, so I didn't actually, I never got to see any of this. It's one of the great things of the podcast. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that you guys filmed that I didn't see, so it's great for me too. I love that guy's voice. <laughs> the horns now do the monks live um, uh, at the uh, at the campus if you will or the property I'm guessing they do I'm guessing they do but I don't know that for sure but uh, they probably have like uh, the, the monks dormitory there around somewhere I always like getting a video of the candles. It's just, I just always like the way it looks. I know a lot of these shots are going to be repeated over and over again, all the different series, seasons of the show that I do, but I don't care. I like the way it looks. And it's always amazing because it's like, you know, 80 degrees outside when we're here and then you walk into these rooms and it's like 120 degrees. John, when you were walking around, were you uh, taking any photos, or were you just sort of kind of breathing it all in? A uh, little bit of both. I did uh, take quite a few photos. I actually took a couple of panoramas, um, more or less so similar to the scene where actually Kyle's looking right here. Got some nice uh, shots of the expanse of Kathmandu. But a little bit of it. I did some laps with the prayer wheels, and I kind of went off and meditated for a little while, and then back to photo taking. <laughs> You know, again, this is a, a place that people come from all over the country and and uh, all over the the entire region to come and spend some time there. So you'll you'll see a lot of uh, Nepali and uh, Indian people who are there as much tourists as we are there. They're really really happy to be there. And it was also cool to be there this this time because a lot of uh, Rehab work had been done on the structures and everything since I was last there. Most of the uh, metal work had all been recently uh, like regilded, and um, I'm trying to remember who told me. I, I heard from someone that it might have been from Kumar that an Amer a wealthy American had donated several million dollars to have it uh, uh, kind of you know everything kind of redone a little bit to to make it nicer and just less uh, 
some of it less decrepit and, and there's you know there's just so much smoke that gets burned there and it just covers a lot of the the really intricate metalwork and so that's all been all being cleaned off and really pretty amazing Yeah, the, the number of dogs just all over the place in Kathmandu, and even actually on the trek itself, was uh, one of the more interesting phenomena that I observed. See, there's some of the, the, the metal work you can see. It's all looks brand new in, in, in front of Steve here as well, what we're coming up to. So it was really... Really cool to see some of the changes. I may see, I may see if I can come back here before I leave. Because uh -huh. I'd like to. Uh, I think this is all footage shot by Chris. I'd like to give my wife another something nice. Maybe it was me. Can't tell. I don't think it's any cool. She already has a very nice. I can hear me yapping in the background to Kumar. That's <laughs> also <laughs> Uh, as you remember, the uh, Swami Buddhanath is way up on this hill, and that there are these just huge staircases that go up. Um, most of the people like us, the tourists who go there, they get dropped off at the top, and uh, you can either get back on your bus there or you can walk down. But uh, I think next time I got there, I'm going to have the group start at the bottom and walk up. Getting practice for what's to come. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Good acclimatization. <laughs> nah, it's nothing. Catman is only like at 3,000 feet. <laughs> <laughs> Make them realize, yeah, they shouldn't have those two beers before lunch. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> These are shots that Chris Chris took. And, and it's really is a beautiful place. It's stunning. It really is. You know, I, I, I think I tried to... Uh, I've got prayer flags all over the trees in, in, in my yard, and, and uh, I see the prayer flags in front of my house, <clears throat> and I think, you know, Swine Budnath or, or Budnath, and uh, I think my, my neighbors just go, uh, really? <laughs> do you have to do that? Because <laughs> I just have all these, all these prayer flags, but this is what I'm trying to recreate in my front yard, but I'm not doing a very good job of it. So. Well, thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate you joining on this uh, inaugural episode. Um, the Next episode, we uh, I'm going to do my best. I haven't edited it yet, but I think we're going to be able to get to Luke Law. Um, we do have some more sightseeing to do in Kathmandu first, but I do want to try to get us to Luke Law because that is where the trek officially officially began. And there really is, uh, as soon as you, you, you fly into Luke Law, it's just dramatic, uh, the, the change in the terrain, because you're not in the valley anymore. You are in the mountains. And... Literally, Lukla is where we start walking, and it's all uphill. Um, well, except for the first day where it's four hours downhill. Very misleading. But then it's all uphill. So, uh, Jeff, thanks so much for joining. Thank you for having me. And, John, great to uh, great to have you on the show um, after all these years. Great to have you being a part of it. Yeah. Thank and you. Same with you, Steve. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time to join us. And... Um, I guess we will all meet up next week and hopefully uh, Chris Marquardt and Monica can join us as well and a few other people can join in and uh, we'll just get into the weekly release schedule. So thanks so much for everyone. We will see you next week. Bye. The rest of Everest is downloaded all over the world every day and watching the show has become a part of many people's weekly routine. The show will always be free to download, but it's by no means free to produce. Please help me cover my costs by making a small monthly or one-time donation from the right sidebar on my website, and in return I'll give you some cool bonus materials. A donation of any amount will grant you access to some interesting video content, including high-definition versions of several podcast episodes, a one-time donation of $25 or more, or any of the monthly donation options will additionally grant you access to a downloadable version of the film Everest The Other Side, which episodes 1 to 61 are based on. I really cannot express how vital these donations are, and if you've made a donation, thank you so much. As always, our announcer is Marlon May, and our music is provided by Wendy Wu. Check her out at wendywu.com. Thanks so much, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching The Rest of Everest. For more information on the expedition, please visit therestofeverest.com. <laughs>